the Passion Translation, John chapter 1. We completed Matthew, and um, I wanted to start with the New Testament, like the first book. And I really feel like our next step is the book of John. It's beautifully written in all of the translations of the Bible. And because I'm reading from the Passion Translation, it gives it such a new and beautiful and love-filled flavor to add to all the other flavors of the translations that you love best. Um, so the book of John, will you join me as we start this journey reading through this gospel of John uh, as he, the beloved one, talks to us about his beloved Jesus. And um, I'm excited for this journey, you guys. The book of John. In the very beginning, the living expression was already there. The word, the living expression, a picture paints a thousand words. And the living expression was with God, yet fully God. There, they were together face to face in the very beginning and through his creative inspiration, the living expression made all things. For nothing has existence apart from him. Don't you just love God? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So beautifully and wonderfully, breathtakingly amazing beyond all we can imagine or think. Not God in a box, but God with us, Emmanuel. Verse four, life came into being because of him, for his life is light for all humanity. And this living expression is the light that bursts through gloom, darkness. The light that darkness could not diminish. Then suddenly a man appeared who was sent from God, a messenger named John. For he came to be a witness to point the way to the light of life, Jesus, and to help everyone believe. John was not that light, but he came to show who is. For he was merely a messenger to speak the truth about the light. For the light of truth was about to come into the world and shine upon everyone. He entered into the very world he created, yet the world was unaware. He came to the very people he created, to those who should have recognized him, but they did not receive him. But those who embraced him, Jesus, and took a hold of his name were given the authority be to become the children of God. He was not born by the joining of human parents or from natural means or by a man's desire, but he was born of God. And so the living expression became a man and lived among us and we gazed upon the splendor of his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, overflowing with tender mercy and truth. John taught the truth about him when he announced to the people, he's the one, set your hearts on him. I told you he would come after me, even though he ranks far above me, for he existed before I was even born. And now, out of his fullness, we are fulfilled. And from him, we received grace heaped upon more grace. Moses gave us the law, but Jesus, the anointed one, unveils truth wrapped in tender mercy. No one has ever gazed upon the fullness of God's splendor except the uniquely beloved son who is cherished by the father and held close to his heart. Now he has unfolded to us the full expression of who God 
truly is. There were some of the Jewish leaders who sent an entourage of priests and temple servants from Jerusalem to interrogate John. They asked him, who are you? John answered them directly, saying, I am not the Messiah. Then who are you? They asked, are you Elijah? No, John replied. So they pressed him further. Are you the prophet Moses said was coming, the one we're expecting? No, he replied. Then who are you, they demanded. We need an answer for those who sent us. Tell us something about yourself, anything. So John answered them, I am fulfilling Isaiah's prophecy. I am an urgent, thundering voice, shouting in the desert, clear the way and prepare your hearts for the coming of the Lord Yahweh. Then some members of the religious sect known as the Pharisees questioned John. Why do you baptize the people since you admit you're not the Christ, Elijah, or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize in this river, but one who will take my place is to be more honored than I. But even when he stands among you, you will not recognize or embrace him. I am not worthy enough to stoop down in front of him and untie his sandals. This all took place at Bethany, where John was baptizing at the place of the crossing of the Jordan River. The very next day, John saw Jesus coming to him to be baptized, and John cried out, Look, there he is, God's Lamb. He will take away the sins of the world. I told you that a mighty one would come who is far greater than I am because he existed long before I was born. My baptism was for the preparation of his appearing to Israel, even though I've yet to experience him. Then as John baptized Jesus, he spoke these words, I see the spirit of God appear like a dove descending from the heavenly realm and landing upon him. And it rested upon him from that moment forward. And even though I've yet to experience him, when I was commissioned to baptize with water, God spoke these words to me. One day you will see the spirit descend and remain upon a man. He will be the one I have sent to baptize with the Holy Spirit. And now I have seen with discernment. I can tell you for sure that this man is the son of God. The very next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. As Jesus was walking right past them, John, gazing upon him, pointed to Jesus and said, Look, there's God's lamb. And as soon as John's two disciples heard this, they immediately left John and began to follow a short distance behind Jesus. Then Jesus turned around and saw that they were following him and asked, what do you want? They responded, Rabbi, which means master teacher. Where are you staying? And Jesus answered, come and discover for yourselves. So they went with him and saw where he was staying. And since it was late in the afternoon, they spent the rest of the day with Jesus. One of the two disciples who heard John's words and began to follow Jesus was a man named Andrew. He sent and found his brother Simon and told him, we have found the anointed one, which is translated the Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet him. When Jesus gazed upon Andrew's brother, he prophesied to him, You are Simon. Your father's name is John. But from now on, you will be called Cephas, which means Peter, the rock. The next day, Jesus decided to go to the region of Galilee. There he found Philip and said to him, Come and follow me. Now Philip, Andrew, and Peter were all from the same little village of Bethsaida. Then Philip went to look for his friend Nathanael and told him, We found him. We found the one we've been waiting for. It's Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth, the appointed one. He's the one that Moses and the prophets prophesied would come. 
Nathaniel sneered, Nazareth. <laughs> what good thing could ever come from Nazareth? Philip answered, come, let's find out. When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said, now here comes a true son of Israel, an honest man with no hidden motive. Nathaniel was stunned and said, but you've never met me. How do you know anything about me? Jesus answered, Nathaniel, right before Philip came to you, I saw you sitting under the shade of a fig tree. I wonder what Nathaniel was praying about when he was sitting under the shade of the fig tree. It must have been something pretty intimate, pretty personal. Because in the very next verse, verse 49, it says, Nathaniel blurted out, Teacher, you are truly the Son of God and the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe simply because I told you I saw you sitting under a fig tree? You will experience even more impressive things than that. I prophesy to you eternal truth. From now on, you will see an open heaven and gaze upon the Son of Man like a stairway reaching into the sky with the messengers of God climbing up and down upon him. Isn't God's word exciting, you guys? <laughs> it's good. And that's the end of John chapter 1 in the Passion Translation.